Well, all our excavation is done and we're going to start by building up this wall. Once we have the wall in place, we'll fill the inside with our 2B stone and then our setting bed and then our pavers. Before we start putting in stone, we put, um, it's a woven geotextile fabric. This is not weed fabric that you get at Lowe's. This is a woven geotextile fabric and it separates the, uh, the dirt from the stone and it helps disperse the weight of the stone and give it just a more of a stable base. So once we have that in for a base on this one, we are using a number 67. It's almost like a 2B clean stone. A 2B clean stone I think is a 57, which is slightly bigger, but it is, it's a clean stone. You can use 2A, which is the same size as this, except that it has fines in it. It's a dirty stone. If you're using that, you really, really need to be careful with compaction. Make sure you have good compaction. We put in six inches of this, so we put it all in, or five inches, we put it all in at once, and then we ran our um, jumping jack over it. You can compact it by hand if you're using 2B for sure. If I'm using 2B or 67s, I would put in probably three inches and hand tamp it with a hand tamp and then in another three inches put it in two lifts. But if you have, if you rent or have one of these compaction devices, you can put it all in at one time. That's if you're using a clean stone. If you're using a fine, a 2A with fines in it, I wouldn't put in more than, I don't know, three inches at a time, unless you have big compaction equipment. We have our stone compacted in and I'm getting ready to screed out our setting bed. I go up an inch and then I use these metal, what is, I think it's gas line, one inch gas line pipe. We cut it in small sections. I'll set those with my laser and then I'll uh, use an aluminum screed bar and pull it across to get a nice level surface for me to start setting blocks. You can use like a two by four if it's straight. Uh, this is the setting bed. This is a wash stone as well. It's clean. It's a number nine. You can also use one B's. They're a little bit easier to find. Not everyone has number nines. Stone dust looks very similar to this. Don't use stone dust, it's not the same. Stone dust is not a clean stone, it has fines in it, it can settle. I don't like to use a setting bed with fines in. You can also use a masonry sand, but that's that's harder to work with. If you can't find number nines, it's a wash clean stone that's smaller than a 1B, you can use a 1B. It's just a little bit bigger than this and it doesn't screed quite as nicely. All right, let's screed this out and then we're ready to start setting block. Hey, what's up folks? We're making progress here. At this point, we're just getting ready to screed out a setting bed to put our pavers in. We now have a raised area so that we can have a nice level uh, spot for our pavers. Um, I just want to talk a little bit. Last time I talked to you, we were screeding out a setting bed for these blocks. We just screed out a setting bed and then we painted out a mark so that we have something something to go by to set our blocks and we just set in the blocks, stack them on top of each other. And yeah, it's really easy at that point. The base work is important. I did want to mention when you're doing a footer, like when you're putting in the base for these blocks, you know that we need six inches of base, but you should also have six inches in front of base in front of the block and six inches behind. I was much, much wider on this one because I, yeah, I messed up. But you need to have a minimum of six inches below the block, six inches in front, and six inches in the back. Always when you're doing retaining walls, these have their hollow block, they have a core. So you core fill them with clean stone every two courses at least. If you core fill every course, that would be better. When you're doing a patio behind it, that's really, really important because if you end up having a void space in here that's not full of stone, it might not show right away, but give it five years and all of a sudden that void space will cave in and fill up with clean stone. And then you'll have a sedlage behind the wall because clean stone worked its way inside the block and all of a sudden your patio is gonna be dipping and doing all kinds of funny stuff behind the wall. So make sure that if you're doing a raised patio like this, that makes super sure that you have every single course core filled and there's no empty spaces in the block. Let me flip this thing up so you have a little bit of a bigger picture. See that? These are all full of stone. I don't want any void spaces in there because that will settle in eventually and then 
my patio is gonna settle. We went along yesterday and cut a cap on. There is a step going there. I'm just getting ready to swing it in. I set that step an inch and a half higher than this, the top of this wall. That way I have some slope for watershed because I don't want it level or there's nowhere my water is going to go. Set that one an inch and a half higher. The rule of thumb, an inch and a half per 10 feet. You can do less than that. I wouldn't, I don't like to do more than an inch and a half of slope per 10 feet, but minimum would be probably an inch per 10 feet. I, don't, I wouldn't want to do less than an inch per 10 feet. Also, because this wall was level and that's higher, it's gonna get a little tricky. So I'm gonna have the pavers falling this way for my watershed, but it's also gonna have to go this way because this isn't sloping. My wall isn't sloping, it's level. I'll, I'll talk about that when we when we screed nines or setting bed. On these raised patios, um, I like to use, we usually use 2A, which has fines in it for a base for a patio. More on that later as to why we do that. But whenever I have a retaining wall in front of it, I just do the whole center with clean stone because it drains and I don't want any moisture behind this wall system. It drains and it's not as hard to compact. And I don't like to run real heavy compaction equipment right behind the walls. So on a raised patio like this, just fill the whole thing with 2B or number 67, a clean stone. I also, all along the back of this wall, I have a four inch corrugated um, perf pipe or drain pipe. And then right here, we put in a little outlet. That way, any water that comes in through the patio is not gonna sit behind the wall and through freeze and thaw, push my wall out. It's all permeable underneath there. It's all clean stone. Any moisture that goes down there is gonna fall straight down to this pipe and come out here. That's pretty important on a raised bed. Make sure your, your drainage is good. Uh, corrugated perf pipe, just in case you don't know what that is. Got some right here. You can get solid pipe like this. Don't get solid pipe. This has little holes in it. That's so it can collect the water and drain it out there. So that's what it looks like. Getting ready to set that step and put out a setting bed and start laying pavers.
Well, folks, it's a wrap. Thanks for following along on this build and uh, let me know what you think. If there's any questions that you have concerning building a raised patio, um, anything we didn't cover or weren't clear on, reach out in the comments and I will try to answer your questions as best I can. If you're enjoying this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. We put lots of different stuff out with uh, how to build in hardscape and in water features. Maybe you even have an idea of your own. If you have something that you would like to see us cover, put it in the comments and maybe DJ and I will shoot a video on it. See you in the next one.